Hi, this is Chris from the Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from Political Voices Network. Malcolm, were you struck? I was waiting to ask you about the Republican debate. I don't know if you watched it, but, you know, Nikki Haley and Chris Christie and others said all the right things about Putin, about, you know, Ukraine. But not one of them on that stage mentioned that they attacked the United States of America in 2016 because they helped Trump and Republicans. So they will never, I mean, it is just interesting, the whole selective memory on that side right where you know and that's why they're even split on russia and whether we should help ukraine right and we don't have you know two parties to me that are fully american or pro-democracy well, that's because the litmus test to 26 the litmus test to 2024 is your loyalty to trump between 2016 and whatever comes in the future if he says he loves putin he loves kim jong-il he hates america burn the constitution they will say that eventually look everyone on that stage with exception of christie and um I, I can't recall the other person said they would vote for trump if he's the nominee yeah. let's not fool ourselves he will be the nominee and he will be vivek you know ramaswamy times a hundred this time around he will swear off all aid to ukraine he will collapse nato if he can he will pull U.S. forces out of there, and he will turn Eastern Europe over to the Russians. Now, here's where I get a little sanguine, which could quite literally lead to World War III, with the United States not participating. The only thing that we have to benefit here is the Ukrainians, using 3% of the American defense budget, are destroying almost 90% of the Russian armed forces. Poland's Boy Scouts could beat Russia in a future war. But Donald Trump and his loyalists, to be part of Trump world, you must be a psychophant to whatever Donald Trump believes, even if it destroys 70 years of how America defended liberal democracy throughout the world. He's a fascist. They are fascists. I don't believe a word they say. Yeah. Um, we were just, we were mentioning this story, but when you talk about, uh, when you get Shouty McShout face about w what a second Trump term would be, uh, this story, with more than a year to go before the 2024 election, a constellation of conservative organizations preparing for a possible second White House term for Trump, uh, recruiting thousands yeah. of Americans to come to Washington on a mission to dismantle the federal government and replace it with a vision closer to his own, uh, led by, of course, Heritage Foundation and all these mm -hmm. wackadoos. Um, the far-reaching effort is essentially a government in waiting for the former president's second term or any candidate who aligns with their ideals and can defeat uh, Biden. I mean, yeah, they're talking about blowing up, quote-unquote, the whole deep state. Um you know, I, I, I was saying about, we were talking about, you know, rumors of Russian money with Vivek Ramaswamy. And I, I was like, I wouldn't be surprised because he's another chaos agent. Yeah. He's another mini Trump, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, he's a financial fraud. I mean, he, he worked in, he worked in, uh, you know, the, the, the market and made a fake Alzheimer's medicine, right? That was already thoroughly debunked and made a billion dollars off of hyping it up and short selling you know, the promise of an Alzheimer's medicine. This man will sell anyone down the street. The very fact that he was, you know, he was stealing the words of Barack Obama and using them against Democrats. Yeah. I mean, he is just, he's auditioning for vice president. He's not going to get it, but he'll definitely get a cabinet position. Right. The, the, the fact that the Republicans are now, the Trump Republicans, the Trumpicans, are now planning and have been planning for the last six months to create a government in waiting. It's the alternate elector scheme all over yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, there was a good comment on Twitter the other day that if Trump wins this election, it will be the last American election. Now, I don't say that as, you know, as a joke. Yeah. I say that as an intelligence professional. I've written several books about it. And now we're getting to the point where these guys are starting to arm themselves again. You have Sarah Palin, you know, Carter Walling and way like a bleached cat for <laughs> civil war and we need to take the the defense of american democracy seriously yeah. and we're okay did i point out we're one year from this election okay one year and don't think that a lot of horrible things can happen and that the republicans can will vote for a convicted felon who could possibly be in jail mm -hmm. for him yeah. to come in and sledgehammer smash 
all of American democracy to install a dictator. I'm not sure you're aware you wrote a book called They Want to Kill Americans. <laughs> However, we were just saying, who was the latest guy today uh, in uh, Georgia government that said, you know, civil open, openly said, mm -hmm. if Brian Kemp doesn't shut Fonnie Willis down, civil war. I don't want to draw, draw my rifle, but I will. You know, he said it on, a, on TV or radio. I can't remember where. But, yeah, you know. State senator. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as a state senator. Listen, I'm sorry. You know, I don't, I don't hawk my books enough. If you haven't read <laughs> They Want to Kill Americans, you are behind I think you barely ever even mentioned them, Malcolm. Well, I mean, you mention it more than I do. Jeez. Um, no, you're behind the power curve on what these people are thinking. Yeah. Okay? And I've read the dang book. It's different from writing it. It's terrified me. Yeah. And worst part is, it was a year ago that that book was, was finished, and it was written the year before after January 6th, and it's only gotten worse. None of the things that I thought would mitigate these people has happened. They have embraced QAnon openly now. You can't be Marjorie Taylor Greene, the QAnon candidate. She is like their, their icon. She's vying to be vice president, along with or Carrie Lake. Listen, we are, we are standing into danger. And you, need to, and you as your listeners, I know you're on it all day, but they need to take it seriously. Yep. Definitely seriously. America, you in danger, girl. That should be your next book, America, you in danger, girl. Good. I just, I was just handed this. The Kremlin says Prigozhin plane may have been downed on purpose. What? You don't say. <laughs> that's your shocked face. <laughs> Malcolm. No, that's my shocked face. <laughs> yeah, that happened like right after we signed off with you last yeah. week. Yeah. What? I thought that was just an unfortunate <laughs> that's, that's coincidence, as you would amazing. say. I can't yeah. believe that happened. <laughs> I come off like Severus Snape on this particular issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. To, to, well, I get that the Kremlin's admitting it, though. So, huh? uh, oh, I see. The Kremlin said Wednesday investigators were considering the possibility that the plane <laughs> carrying Fergosia was downed on purpose. I see. Uh, their first explicit acknowledgement that he may, Malcolm, he may have been, wait for it, assassinated. <laughs> You know, on my substance last week, I wrote the follow-up. I had done three Prigozhin mutiny uh, substacks and videos. And last week, it was called the Prigozhin Explosion. <laughs> and look, is it possible he was assassinated? Well, first, we had indications there were surface air missiles that may have been used, or a bomb. So whatever happened, uh, he's dead. Yeah. And PMC Wagner's being spread to the wind, and my favorite part that tells you where this is going is that all of the PMC Wagner mercenary cemeteries are being bulldozed, mm -hmm. literally yeah. bulldozed memorials and signs taken down and covered over with concrete. Putin is doing an absolute Stalinist job of erasing that there ever was an organization called PMC Wagner. And they're blocking cemeteries in St. Petersburg, so Prigozhin can't be burned either. Yeah, wow. yeah. Although I will say about Prigozhin, uh, that guy also, because he interfered yeah. in uh, 2016, as you wrote in your book. <laughs> so he was also uh, part of that whole thing. So, I, you know, I, the uh, latest news this morning, Malcolm, you probably heard, I'm sure Russian officials accuse Ukraine of launching what appeared to be the biggest nighttime drone attack on Russian soil since the war began. The Kremlin's forces also hit Kiev during the night with what Ukrainian officials called a massive combined attack that uh, killed two people. Wait, just give us from your point of view an update on, on what's happening in Ukraine and what the, the future holds, you think? Sure. Well, first, I, I have an article coming out here in the next week on Substack. And the reason that I haven't been talking about it or writing about it is quite simple. Uh, I was briefed on major parts of the counteroffensive before the counteroffensive launched. Mm -hmm. So people have been asking me all summer, how come you're not writing about this? Because I didn't want to endanger what was going on. Uh, the big problem with the Ukrainian counteroffensive is I took part in last year's massively successful counteroffensive that took back all of Kharkiv province, six cities, 300 villages, in 72 hours. People have been led to believe, or now believing, that's what should have happened here. There should have been this giant blitz, what we call a sledgehammer on glass effect, and they should have broken the Russians and taken back all these places. That was not the strategy. The strategy was 
six to eight equivalent of 50 ton metal presses wow. pressing down on a steel girder and that all of those pressure points along that girder would shatter the girder and break it in various places allowing for breakouts to go through yeah. so they spent the first part of the summer destroying enemy air defense getting more munitions from the united states to root out the uh the uh, russians in their trenches demining because the russians had placed almost a million mines out there and now we're starting to see the pressure points break on that iron girder uh, per per uh particularly down in the direction uh in zaporizhia near the city of tokmak which will break russian forces in half it will split russian army south and north and then the ukrainians will start having multiple breakouts yeah there it is, my first drink of the day, Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic. Many of you know my, my story. I stopped drinking wine for three years during COVID, during the lockdown as part of a health reset. Now I drink wine in moderation, but this is an amazing new product. I've always believed in probiotics. And Z-Biotics, check this out. You drink just one of these. It's the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. I am using this and I feel great in the morning. I don't have to worry if I have an extra glass of wine, I still feel great in the morning. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. I've always had acid reflux problems. It is this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. All I know is it works. It is Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic. Go to zbiotics.com/political voices or scan the QR code on the screen right now.